Hello everyone and welcome to this dungeon editor tutorial for Legend of Grimrock 2. I'm going to be making a couple of tutorials that will uh, showcase some of the new features that we have in the new editor and I'm going to try to make these tutorials short and to the point. In this tutorial we're simply going to go uh, over the interface itself and uh, what what new features we can find in the interface. So if we uh, fire up the editor we can see that it's almost identical to the first one and uh, the I think the only new button is uh, actually this one. Uh, now we can mute and unmute the sound uh, when we are uh, playtesting our dungeon. Uh, apart from that, yeah, it's pretty much the same. So let's go to File, New Project and since this is a tutorial I'm just gonna generate some name. Temple of Kaman Pilok sounds good and we create uh, we have our standard room right here in front of us uh, and one torch on the wall and if we play this uh, we can see that I'm in the dungeon uh, tile set and yeah this is something that most people know from the first uh, editor but if you if we're gonna go full screen we now need to press F uh, in the first one we needed to press Control F and Control F is actually find now and the find feature is uh, is pretty neat I mean uh, some of the guys that have been making complicated uh, complicated dungeons or complicated modules they know that uh, we can have a lot of entities going on and, and the Control find is uh, it's a happy addition to to the arsenal of the motor so uh, it will list out all the entities or all the assets that we have created within our project uh, we can filter it by the current level uh, we can also filter it by type and you can see over here that we have uh, th these are the same types that I have my assets over here so if I want to filter by a a door we can see I, I don't have a door and if we want to filter by monster I don't have a monster so another another thing about this which is uh, nice is that if I select something for instance if I select the torch holder right here and, and select it everything else will get maxed out this will uh, dim everything around the torch and just highlight the torch so if you're looking for a spe uh, s specific entity or if you're looking for something it will be easy to spot it once we have this uh, crowded with all kinds of uh, entities and data so that's good to know uh, to remove the mask we we simply select something else we just click somewhere and, and the mask gets removed uh, we can also place the mask by hand by selecting something if I select the player start and I can use Control H to to put the mask on, and Control H will take the mask off again. Uh, you probably noticed when I pressed the torch holder that I have a lot of uh, components, and this is a this is the new component system. Uh, it breaks down the asset that we have into components, and if you play this and, and take a closer look at the at the torch you can see that I have right from the get-go I have a, a good control over what's going on and uh, he here's of course where we will add some connection to it uh, you're familiar with this if we want to hook it to a script or hook it to something else uh, but what's n uh, interesting is that I have almost uh, full control over every component so for example uh, if I want this torch not to shine a light I can simply take the light away and now it doesn't shine a light anymore so the torch is there, the fire is there, all the particle effects are there but it doesn't shine a light likewise if I take away the particles like this uh, we have the torch, we got the shadows from it but the fire particles are missing so the sound it's giving away also we can make it sound less just by taking the away the sound or we can easily change the sound and here we can just uh, 
scroll to all the sounds that are uh, have been defined and let's just choose speech waves for example and I don't know if you can hear this but now instead of uh, the burning sound the sound is actually yeah the torch is emanating uh, beach waves and and so this is just an example of uh, how this system works and uh, I think it's pretty neat it gives us great control over what we're doing uh, over here we got our asset browser same as before and uh, except now that uh, the assets have been uh, categorized into much uh, more detail so for example we can filter only by door or only by food only by herbs and then we have something items and for example some some of the herbs are of course items so if black moss over here if we go to items it will also be listed under items uh, we got all our monsters here uh, obstacles so you can easily filter by obstacles uh, the scripting entities there they have its own category the spells and this is something that I found amazing is that all all the effects and all the spells are actually a, a entity now within the editor it's uh, before we uh, we used to spawn them by by effects or or, or you know create effects but now they can ex actually be selected from within the editor and if we take something like a like a flame wave that one is cool and you see if I place a flame wave here and if I refresh the dungeon we will we will have a flame wave burning the whole party and, and killing some of the people uh, let's click H to heal up the party same as before so that all the spells are actually and all the effects are, are listed here as an entity I think is quite cool uh, then of course we have weapons and like before weapons are of course an item so uh, backbiter which is a dagger it, it, you can find that in both places and missile weapons and, and weapon throwing weapons uh, one thing that uh, I find interesting with this is uh, I don't know if we can define our own filters so uh, that will uh, that will be pretty neat if, if that was true if uh, I could put all my custom assets into a uh, their own category so I can easily find them that would be something I would find nice so uh, in this uh, editor we also have uh, some new keys if you go into preferences uh, we can see we can customize all the all the keys that we have uh, I have changed some of these uh, for example zoom in and zoom out uh, I have changed that to control plus and control minus simply because uh, that's what I'm used to from Photoshop and other programs uh, rouse selection and lower selection uh, I, I changed those as well simply to be uh, plus and minus but I think I haven't changed anything else but uh, you can go in here and, and you can change the keys uh, to your liking uh, and speaking of which zoom in and zoom out that's something new so now that uh, we can have this uh, if we have fairly fairly complex dungeons we can now easily just hit our zoom in button and zoom out buttons and uh, we can zoom in and out of the uh, of the of the editor, and, and it makes it easier to click something. And, and when items are you know are getting crowded, and our project is getting complicated, it, it will be easy just to zoom in and, and select the things that you need, and then then zoom out again. So uh, that's pr that's pretty cool. Uh, if we go into uh, editing mode if we click you know we're gonna edit our dungeon uh, this will actually change uh, before uh, you were used to going to properties and you were used to selecting the tiles that 
that you wanted to use for a given floor. That has changed. Uh, now we don't select tile sets. Uh, the tile sets are all listed here and they're listed as brushes. And uh, it's quite easy to to paint with the brushes. For example, whoa! That scared the crap out of me. I forgot we had the <laughs> the fire thing here. I'm gonna delete it so it's not to give me another hard deck. So for example, uh, if we if we choose a brush, uh, uh, I know that I'm using the dungeon floor now, but uh, the dungeon floor tile I choose that one. And you can see I have the left mouse button and I have the right mouse button, so I can I can choose different uh, different uh, tiles for for different buttons of the mouse. Uh, I'm going to select the dungeon floor tile and I'm going to paint one right in front of me and refresh. And you can see now that I have just painted this tile as uh, a dungeon floor tile and, and and not the dungeon floor. By selecting the dungeon floor and paint over it again, I will change it back. If I want to paint the entire room, change the floor tiles of the entire room, uh, one way to do it is just to paint it like this and, and just refresh. But uh, if we if we change it back to what we had before, like this, and if we make the room a lot bigger, we just create this a lot bigger. This is. This is how we used to do it in the old days, but I'm gonna show you in a moment something that I find quite nice is that we have a fill option, meaning that if I choose a dungeon floor tile and if I just shift click, I shift click with a brush into this area, I will change all the tiles at once. So that's something that will speed this thing up quite nicely. And I'm going to choose the dungeon wall here and filter this out. And nice to know that we can just simply do this, do this, and I filled it in. So that's shift and just clicking. So now I have different tiles here. So I can cast the floor board. I can fill this up or I can change that back to how it was. If I change it to the floor tiles I will have the entire room the same and then I will fill the entire room so so that's something that is quite nice to know and will make it easier and of course you can if you want to draw a path or if you want to draw something you can easily do that just by dragging the mouse and, and drawing around uh, drawing around your room so uh, another thing to note is that the party we have will stay consistent between play and pause. What that means is uh, now that I've taken the torch from the wall and put it into the hands of, of my first champion, uh, that will stay that way even though if I if I stop the preview and if I play the preview, you can see I still have the torch and uh, the first torch, of course, gets respawned over here. But the everything I do with the party, that will be consistent throughout play and pause. And this is the design s decision the the guys at Almost Human made, uh, so it's easier uh, to test the dungeon from within the editor. So, if if you were to create a, a huge huge project and if you were play testing it. Uh, if you would see something, you would stop. You would you'd play again. The party, they will not lose their inventory, and, and they will not lose what they have already done. Uh, of course, the items that they have picked up will get respawned again, but uh, you can continue testing the dungeon even though if you stop it. Uh, also, that will mean that uh, something like food meter, uh, it will continue to go down in in its normal fashion and if i if i stop it and play it it w it will not have reset the food meter so i can test the dungeon i can walk around in it i can find out if my item placement is good i can find out if uh, if my food placement is good or 
everybody is dying of starvation or something that I, and I know ah I need to this is the place where everybody is uh, going to start dying of starvation of course they won't die but they will uh, they will be, be getting quite hung hungry so I think this is a this is a nice feature and it will you know minimize uh, minimize the time where we actually have to uh, export and play it with inside the game this will allow the modder to to play test the thing more extensively uh, within the editor so so that's nice uh, another things you will notice here are that now we have layers uh, we have layers of uh, uh, for the map uh, I'm working now in the tile layer or tiles layer uh, where I'm placing different tiles we have something called a height map layer and height map is something that I'm going to go into in more detail in a in a another tutorial uh, we also have reflections uh, this is a reflection layer that it comes into play when we are uh, creating water and, and water effects and that's also something that I'm going to cover in a later tutorial and then we have a noise layer and the noise layer uh, is similar to the height map layer and so I will take the height map and the noise layer in a later tutorial and in the tiles layer you can see that we have something called elevations or we can we can draw elevations now in the uh, in the dungeon to lower the dungeon and and, and making a yeah, make making it multi-floored within the same level. So uh, that's what I'm going to cover in my next tutorial. So hopefully I will see you there. Uh, thanks for watching.